this is Robin West from Zebra Data Services. Today we're going to talk about the new APIs available for Cloud Connect for RFID. These are some new APIs that are available on developer.zebra.com slash APIs. And if you notice, there's a new tile in here called Cloud Connect for RFID. Once you've gone in here, we do have a, no a lot of documentation in here showing exactly how to use it and what to do with it. Uh, but I'm going to go through a few of the features that are available right now. So today we're primarily going to talk about the cloud, connect the cloud management for RFID toolset. This is a set of APIs that are available on the portal. And they have to do with managing and figuring out the status and uh, what's going on with your reader. Uh, this is only available right now for the uh, fixed readers, FX7500 and FX9600. But uh, it allows you to see things like the status, uh, the version of the different components of your reader, and do things like reboot it, uh, set LEDs, uh, change the OS, update or downgrade, uh, and then be able to configure it, uh, everything from your network to your full config file um, to some of the new features we have around modes, which I'll go into in a little bit, a little bit in a moment. So in order to use these APIs, you're going to need a bear token. And in order to get that bear token, uh, you're going to need an app key. Uh, the app keys are something that we'll provide to you once you've talked with your account manager and uh, indicated an interest in demoing or purchasing these APIs. Um, once you have worked with them to get that, uh, you'll find the app key in the developer portal again uh, under your apps. You'll find that in the data services menu under apps. And I do have one in here. I'm not going to pop it down because that would show you my uh, consumer key and secret. And those things are supposed to be kept secret. Uh, but I will show you how to use them to get your bearer token and utilize the APIs. So the easiest way to start working with these management APIs is to actually go to GitHub and pull down our Postman collection. If no one knows what Postman is, it's a tool, it's a free tool that you can get online uh, to test out and try web APIs. Uh, I'll show you how to use it in just a moment, but basically you'll, you can pull down the collection from here and upload it straight into Postman and it should work right out of the box, other than the fact that you'll have to set up a couple of values. I mentioned earlier how to get the key in secret. Uh, the device ID is obviously the serial number of your reader. Now that you have your Postman collection set up, uh, it should show up in your list here is RFID Reader Management. And this will give you a bunch of uh, methods that you can use within the Reader Management API. You notice these ones match up with the Cloud Connect uh, and Reader Management API list that is in here. Uh, first thing you're going to need to do when you come in here is to grab a OAuth token. So I'm going to send that request. And if I have my key and secret set up by the account team, it should give me a nice token, uh, which I can use either by going back to the portal, throwing that into here, closing that up, and say, grabbing the status from here. Try it out. And if I run that, I can scroll down here and see the status of it. I can see that uh, I have a single antenna connected and see a bunch of information about the file system. And if I roll down here, I can see the uptime shows as 21, minute, uh, 21 hours, 36 minutes, 39 seconds. I can then go to my reader. And if I hit the status, it will show basically the same data. Um, I can then go to our wonderful Postman collection, get the status, run that, and it will show the same information down here, 21 hours, 37 minutes. One of the other things that we can do to just to verify that it's all connected and working is to work with the app LED. So I'm going to send a request about the app LED just to see what its current state is. Um, as you can see on the image there, uh, it's turned off, which is the default state for the app LED. Um, but maybe we want to set that. 
I'm going to go in here into the body, green 10 seconds, we want it to flash. Actually, I'm going to set this to 20 seconds so we can do some verification. 20 seconds, set it to flash, I'm going to send that request. You notice on the video feed it starts to flash. I'm going to then go in here and get the app LED again, which should now show me as non-default because it's flashing green, not the standard behavior for that LED. I'm going to go in here and modify it to red, set it to 10 seconds so we don't have to wait for it. And looks like it's done flashing. So I'm going to send that request and it should now start flashing red. So this is something that you can use for any number of different uh, application uses that you would have. Um, I'm sure you guys probably know far more than I do, uh, but some of the things I was thinking about were things like, uh, you know, being able to find a specific reader that you're looking for. Say you're, on, you know, on location, and you don't want to have to crawl around and find the tiny little label on each reader. Um, <laughs> would help to find that. Uh, you could also uh, post it red if you're having an error or some issue with the reader um, from your application. I'm sure there's other ways of using it. Uh, but some of the other things you can do with it are to get basic information about your reader. I showed you get status already. Uh, version tells you the version of a number of different things that are going on with it. Um, uh, you can get and set the network information for your device um, and your config file. This is obviously something you don't want to mess around with a whole lot unless you know what you're doing because you can really mess up your reader if you don't know how to set a proper config file. Um, I'll go through a few of these other ones in a moment, but one of the other fun ones is you can actually also do over the air uh, firmware updates through this. Uh, so if you use get OS, it will tell you the currently available versions of firmware uh, within the system that you could potentially pull down. Uh, right now there's only the one that we have uh, that is part of the service uh, and set OS will then allow you to actually set which version that you want to pull down and install on your reader so it's pretty useful so some of the things that I kind of glossed over were the mode APIs uh, the mode APIs is something new for the readers now uh, most of the time when you're working with readers in the past they basically had one default behavior. Uh, basically, every time it saw a tag, uh, whether or not it's you know was reading, uh, you know it was able to see tags every second or multiple times a second. Every time it saw that tag, it would send an alert or send that notification up to whatever its host was. Um, which you know, if you have thousands of tags in an area and multiple readers, can be a huge amount of data that you're pushing through the system. Um, for cloud-based services, that's not exactly an ideal situation. So we set up a bunch of different modes within here. Um, there are four currently available. Um, the simple mode is probably the easiest to work with. It's basically anytime it sees a new tag enter its range, it will send a note of a, an alert out. Um, but there are several other modes. We do have documentation explaining what those modes are and how to work with them. Um, right now I'm going to check and see what the current mode is on here. And I believe I have it set up for a uh, future demo for being able to uh, deal with uh, the webhook subscriptions that we have for cloud data transmission um, as another cloud-based service. Um, so yes, this is set up for that. But say I want to set it back to simple mode, which is the default behavior on these. So I'm going to set this back to simple and remove the interval because simple doesn't have an interview. Make sure that we're still on single antenna, send that. You can also add filters to this to say you only want to get tag reads that have a prefix of one, two, three, four. Um, then you can actually set that in here as well, as well as a few other type, types of filters, which again, we have documentation explaining what those filters are. Um, if you want to filter from the reader. So those are the Cloud Connect Reader Management APIs. And I hope you found them to be useful in your reader management uh, use cases and embedding them into your services in order to work with RFID data readers without needing to have on-premise solutions. Thank you very much.